I've done my RYA, Yatmaster, Offshore, and all of those things. I've done all the theories, like a 12 hour exam, plus a couple of hours to do all the corrections. I've sailed thousands of miles, but I still don't know how to sail a catamaran. And it's just plain simple. None of the courses that we looked at, not in Cape Town, not even the South African courses, not the RYA courses, no one was doing the training on a catamaran which left me with a big problem because my sailing was done on a 36 foot Oceanus, a monol, a small, small monol. And now suddenly I need to do a 20 ton, 45 foot catamaran. So this series is going to be about that. The first of the series is how to dock a catamaran. Because you've got now the boat and I tell you it's all yours. Go sail the world. Um, yeah, get off the docks first and there's many other very expensive boats all around you. <laughs> it is, it is really, your heart is going doof, 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 doof because, yeah, no one told you how to or trained you or nothing, nothing about how to get this cat out of the docks. So let's do this episode on how to get the cat out of the docks and back into the docks. We were privileged of watching Happy Together 2, the big massive Leopard 50 coming in. And for the first time she was splashed and now she's coming in. But look at the captain, that's one of the experienced Leopard uh, captains or skippers. He's already making sure that we're coming in slowly and turning the boat a little bit because the, there is a couple of, this is a very narrow space to come in with that big catamaran. But look at his hands, if you can see. He's also asking the guys to monitor the bow. Very important. You will see now that he, over, he actually started too early. Now he's moving a little bit forward. You can see that massive thrust coming out. He's braking now. Okay. And he's starting to pivot. Check how he's pivoting. He's making sure his picture is, is working the way he was thinking it was working. And he's still turning. You can just look at the thrust of the of the propeller, but also his hands. So you will see there. So he's making sure the boat is aligning with the with the pier, the finger piers. And now very important, just look at him. He's checking that okay, he's going to miss that one on the port off. And now he's only checking starboard and he's aligning. Look how he's aligning the boat by just looking one side, making sure, concentrating that the picture is going the way he wants it to go. Check is again, checking that the picture is the same. Just a few technical things before we start with the practical things. First thing is people say you just drive it like a tank. Well, this is the only reason why you can say you drive it like a tank because it has two engines it can go either turning like this or if it's like that you can turn like that and that's where it stops with the tank analogy because a tank don't float sideways this is a boat it's not a tank so <laughs> that, in the beginning that was a pretty big thing for me to try and figure out why are we going sideways if they say we are like a tank so, first thing is, we're going to center our, our steering wheel. So make sure that your steering wheel is centered, either by looking at the rudder indication, if you have a rudder indication, or if you know where the center is, make sure you mark it so that you can easily feel it and know where the center is, like we've done over here. So you put it in the center, so in our case this one is upright, and then we, we turn this thing, the knob, so it is locked. So the steering wheel is basically locked, it cannot move. And then we're now in tank mode, if you want to call it like that. Okay, so where the tank analogy thing comes from, if we put both the engines forward, so both the throttles is now in forward motion, then it actually means both the propellers is going to push the boat equally forward. So we're not going to go left or right, we're just going to go forward. 
The same, if we put the engines astern or in reverse, then you're going to, the propeller is going to pull the boat backwards at the same amount of, of, of torque and we will go then backwards. So this is neutral, this is forward, this is backwards for both engines. Where the tank analogy is coming in, we can do this. So the port side engine is forward and the, the starboard side is astern and now it means we will start turning like this. So the boat is going to move like this in that direction. Now every catamaran has a different pivot point. And for Sisu, it is just just be after the mast, so it's not exactly where I'm sitting, it's a little bit in front of me. So if I'm turning, then by the time the boat is finished turned, we will be facing exactly the point where we turned. So you just need to find that out in the beginning, but it, is, it takes time. So just find a quiet spot and turn and see where the boat is turning. And then you know, more or less, where you need to stop to actually do that turn and go a turn or forward wherever you want to go. And the same with this, if it is like this, we will now, if the, the starboard is forward and the port side is a stern, then we will now go start going in these circles in this direction. For, for the beginning, I didn't even think about stern and forward. This is my left engine, this is my right engine, and that's it. And if I want to go backwards or reverse, I reverse the engines and it's going. So in the beginning, don't worry about whether you, you have the right terminology in your mind. You, if you're used to a car, this is going forward and this is going backwards. And this is the left engine and that is the right engine. And, and, and stay with that until you later on learn the right terminology. So don't worry about this terminology in the beginning. You just want to get your boat safely out of the harbor and back into the harbor. So this is a very important thing to, to remember. So, for example, we want to get out of our slip. There's no wind, there's no current. It's just we want to get out of the slip. So we're going to cast off the lines and then move out of the slip. But the problem is, for example, if we now with our, that side against the, 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 um, the dock. If we're just going to go forward, we're going to roll the fenders and eventually the fenders will pop out or something and then you will scratch the boat. So we want to move a little bit off the dock. So what we do is we keep the fender on that side, stern, a stern on, the, on the back side of the boat. So we put the fender here. So the fender is now going to be there. Then we're just going to push a little bit equal speed so that the boat starts turning like that against this fender. But now it's very important to make sure that you don't move forward or backwards. And if you see you start going backwards, then just take off the, the engine that is pushing you or pulling you backwards. If you see you're going a little bit forward, then just put it in neutral and you will see you're not going forward and until you see you need to put it forward again because the boat the central the pivot point is not exactly in the middle so if you want to just do that you need to make sure that you don't roll off the fender that is a big thing so get a point look at this point and make sure that engine doesn't pull you forward or backwards okay the moment you know you're far away your your, your nose is pointing maybe just 20 centimeters you just need to point it away from that side then you put both engines forward and you can just idle out that is in calm conditions if you're not in calm conditions you might need to push a little bit harder by pushing it a little bit more forward to get out of the thing just remember if there's boats in front of you if you're in a little alley you might eat the boat so <laughs> just stop before you get to them long before you get to them that's another thing about the tank a tank stops immediately, it's like a car. If you break the breather, it breaks pretty much like it breaks. This is not the same. You need to use the engines to break it. So if you need to break more, push back, push back, push back until you see you're slowing down. Don't just go flat out back because if you just go flat out back, you can start getting momentum that side before you realize it and then you're back into your slot, hopefully, back in your, into your slot and not into the pier. 
So, if you want to stop the boat, take both engines and is first neutral and look, 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 you see you're not going, you're not slowing down as fast as you think, then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then you see, okay, you, you're getting the effect, you stop. The moment you see you start to stop, bring it back, ease it back into neutral or into reverse idle, a stern idle. The same with forward, if you want to, if you want to go, if you go backwards, you need to stop, push it a little bit, push a little bit more, 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 until you see, okay, the boat is stopping, bring it back to neutral. Don't overdo it, don't do too much, don't do too quick. Remember you want to have as much speed as you want to connect into something. And that is basically zero speed. <laughs> so you don't want to connect in something. But if the wind is pushing you or the current is pushing you, you need to get a little bit movement over the rudders. So that's a, another important thing. If you put it into idle, most of the catamarans in clear and calm conditions will have enough speed for the water to flow over the keels and over the rudder. So your control surfaces have some water flow and the keels does have some water flow or do have some water flow and you can now start using the water as rails so you can go forward in a certain direction. If you don't get that flow over the keels or over the rudders as well, you will start losing um, control and the boat will start drifting to one side to the other. So you need to, if the wind is pushing like now, you need to put maybe some more effort into it to go it forward. However, if the wind starts pushing you this way, you might need to maybe put one in neutral and another one a little bit forward. This is creating speed. So you must be careful if you want to create, that you don't create too much speed. Because maybe, maybe you want to keep that on neutral and just put this one in neutral. Put it in idle and this one in neutral. So you counter now the flow and you start going like this. But if the wind is still pushing you and you can see you drifting off, you can, you can put it like this, a little bit more. And if you even need more, you can go a little bit more. And then you get forward motion and you put your nose into the wind a little bit like this. Keep looking at the picture. This is maybe the most important thing that you guys need to, 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 to get in, into your mind. You must look forward. Look at the picture that you're looking at your surroundings. Like your peripheral vision, everything must work together. So if you see it start changing, and it's just like a pivot motion, then you know you need to just pivot back. But if you start drifting, you will see it's moving like this. All your vision is moving this way, so you know you're moving that way. It's not just a pivot. So keep that picture in mind. If it goes too fast, slow down. If it goes too slow, s speed up. If you turn, Counteract. Keep the picture in mind where you want to go. Go look in the direction where you want to go and keep that thing in mind and then handle the controls while keeping that thing in mind, the picture in your mind. Of course, you need to look at other boats, you need to look at other people, you need to look at many other things. But this picture that you create in your mind must steadily go into the direction where you want to go. That is very important. The picture in your mind if you want to go that direction, everything must tell you you're going in that direction. Otherwise, you, you, you can look at that direction and you can see you moving like this. Then you know you're not going to get to the picture where you want to go. So you need to correct. So either then do like this, so you, your bow starts moving back. And you go, now you see you're doing this. It's like, okay, something's wrong. So you need to maybe go a little bit more like this. As, as it, that's it, okay. and then dry again oh he's slipping again so you need to keep that picture in mind if you keep the picture in your mind and if it's moving not the right way you imagine it should move you know you're going off course and this is basically the big thing about going out of the docks or going into docks make sure that you use your two engines to go into the dock now once you're out of the docks and you you're clear you can then untie the, the steering wheel and you can start using the steering wheel like normal. A very nice thing, if you go forward and you're steering and you see, oh, we, we, we're going to hit that boat a little bit, so we need to go more right, so maybe go 
forward a little bit there or just put this one and maybe even break this the 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 um, starboard side a little bit so that you move to that way and then go forward again so you can use this as a break it doesn't break immediately but if you just idle you will see slowly you will start going that way and then you can put it again and this is how you slowly just move your boat in certain directions so if you see the boat goes like that and you want to bring it back that side you can put it in neutral and if it doesn't move immediately you can put it actually in a stern and it will start pivoting and maybe you should put that one a little bit forward and this one neutral and then that one back again and then you're on track and you go again so just keep the picture in mind and if you want to turn about use it sparingly I did my engine checks and I think we are ready to cast off so when we're going to cast off we need to look at a couple of things first of all you need to look at the wind so if you look at the wind here you can see that the flags are not really moving and my windex is not even running so no wind it is actually a very perfect condition for us to do this video um, which also is the perfect conditions that you guys need to do when you start off with things like this because then you know exactly what the boat is doing when you're applying any of the throttles or any of the control surfaces like the rudders um, and that is actually the perfect conditions so try to get onto a boat when it is like this and then you can actually slowly maneuver the engines and see what's happening without actually fearing that the wind or the currents or anything is going to to affect you we in the corner corner of the <coughs> of the marina we next to next to a lift <laughs> but look at the water you will also see nothing is actually moving see the grass and the debris from the storm that is just floating there doing absolutely nothing they're not moving so that also means there's no current so we are pretty cool with the current and the wind so let's start the engines and get us out of here